Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, is home to vast savannas, abundant wildlife, and a diverse group of people with rich cultures. In 2006, His Excellency President Yori Museveni announced that Uganda had discovered oil after years of exploration in the country's western region. On the 6th of January 2006, when a commercial discovery was made, you know, commercial discovery, uh, many countries drill, but you don't find the commercial discoveries. We had a national thanksgiving uh, prayer led by the president of Uganda. And I remember there was also the president of, uh, of Burundi and all the dignitaries who were there. That is memorable. The Albertine Graben, also known as the Lake Albert Basin, lies on the western border of Uganda and the eastern border of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The, the oil and gas resources that have been discovered in Uganda are close to 6.5 billion barrels of oil. And uh, as you are aware, there's no, nowhere in the world do you ever recover everything from the ground because of the technology and the type of oil fields they are in. Uh, for Uganda, we expect to recover about 1.4 billion barrels out of those 6.5 billion barrels that have been discovered. Resources to be developed in this graben are for the Lake Albert Development Project, which encompasses the Tilenga Project, operated by Total Energies EP Uganda with 56.67%, and the Kingfisher Project, operated by Sinuk with 28.33%, both in a joint venture partnership with Uganda National Oil Company with 15% on behalf of the government of Uganda with the Petroleum Authority of Uganda as the regulator. The creation of these institutions was so well carefully studied before they were created. We did a lot of benchmarking worldwide and they were thoroughly, thoroughly scrutinized and established. The journey has been slow but surely and uh, the basics have been put in place like the needed agreements the needed agreements are in place the uh, the law now regarding the transportation of the crude oil is in place and we are about to see a final investment decision being taken into that uh, pipeline we are moving on well on the refinery part. We have been moving and uh, making sure that all the requirement is in place. Located in Bulisa and Noya districts in western Uganda, the Tilenga project is an upstream development with a capacity of 204,000 barrels of oil per day. The name Tilenga is a derivative of two local names for the Uganda cob, Til in Acholi Alur and Engabi in Lugungu. The word represents languages from Tilenga Project's host communities. The name is also based on the Uganda cob, which is the national emblem, to symbolize the project's national significance to the country. The project covers six oil fields, namely Jobiri, Ngiri, Gunya, Kigogole, Nsoga, Kasemene, Warindi. These projects, of course, are important not only for the country, but for total energy as well, to showcase really our commitment, our ability to develop all these resources at low cost with low carbon footprint. And today, the greenhouse gas emission intensity of 13 kilograms per barrel is much lower than our current average in our portfolio. Minimizing the impact on the environment has driven the design of the whole project, with really the ambition to produce a net positive impact on biodiversity. With approximately 400 wells that will be drilled over 31 well pads. During this period, the national content has been at the heart of our activity with already more than 160 Ugandan companies directly involved in the Tilenga project. Other main project installations include a central processing facility, well pads, oil wells, flow lines, 
a lake water abstraction facility, a feeder line and support bases. The mitigation of the impact of the affected local communities has been a priority for us. The first step, of course, has been to establish with the authorities a transparent process to ensure a fair compensation to all the project affected persons. But our commitment goes obviously far beyond that. Our objective is to improve the livelihood of all our PAPs. And this can be achieved through a global livelihood restoration plan. Kingfisher Field Development Area is spread over approximately 344 kilometers in the Lake Albert Rift Basin in Western Uganda. The oil field is situated on the eastern bank of Lake Albert, which acts as a border between Uganda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It was discovered by the Kingfisher One Wildcat Well in 2006. The Kingfisher project is planned to develop the Kingfisher, Mputa, Nzizi and Waraga fields. The project will produce 40,000 barrels of oil per day during peak production. The crude will be treated at a central processing facility, CPF, located on the southeastern shores of Lake Albert. The Kingfisher development wells will be highly deviated wells from onshore surface locations targeting the offshore reservoirs. The production and processing facilities of the project will be located on the Buhuka Flats at the shores of Lake Albert in the Kikube district of Uganda. ESIA report has been carried out by the party and has already approved by the relevant Uganda authorities. The ESIA process like involves all stakeholder public healings in all lane required and required for the project has been done in compliance of national relevant legislation and international best practice, particularly IFC performance step. The government of Uganda has plans of commercialization of the discovered oil resources, including the phased development of a refinery, use of crude oil to generate power, and export of crude oil to the rest of the world market via the East African Crude Oil Pipeline. A 1,443-kilometer crude oil pipeline that will transport Uganda's crude oil from Kabale Hoima in Uganda to Chongoleani Peninsula near Tanga Port in Tanzania. The pipeline route was selected by the government of Uganda as the least costing and most robust route. The pipeline will be buried to minimize impact on the environment with some facilities above the ground designed to ensure minimal environmental and social impact. The project is compliant with the Ugandan and Tanzanian national legislations and international requirements. Done what's called ESIA, so Environmental and Social Impact Assessments, uh, separately for, for Uganda and Tanzania and had a long dialogue with the uh, the environmental agencies of the two countries, and those were both approved uh, actually now in, uh, I think, 2019 and early 2020. So a project of this nature is, is like a sort of gigantic jigsaw with many, with many parts uh, and will provide opportunities, I'd say, both locally or within Tanzania and Uganda, but also globally. So we'll be doing some of the procurement and engineering overseas, but all the construction obviously takes place in situ, in country, uh, so we'll be bringing some international expertise and international contractors to do to, to manage the, 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 the construction, but the, the workforce will be uh, predominantly local, and uh, that workforce itself will require uh, a number of supporting services, uh, camps, food. What the FID moment means is that we, we have now behind us, I would call it the preparation phase of the project, which has been in some respects a bit of a roller coaster ride, but a, a very wide ranging preparation phase covering, I'd say, technical definition, the call for, for tenders, the, the placing of the contracts, uh, all the preparation associated with land, the environmental uh, and social impact assessments, uh, and of course the negotiation and the completion of the commercial and legal framework. 
But to a certain extent, what today means is we put that behind us and we get into the real action. I know most people relate to the East African crude oil pipeline, the Tilenga and Kingfisher, but the breadth of projects is far bigger than the upstream and midstream. And UNOX placement in those projects is quite critical. We are literally in these projects from reservoir to the consumer or from cradle to grave of these projects. Mm. And that's how focused we are in, um, in contributing to economic transformation. The government of Uganda plans to develop 60,000 barrels of oil per day at a refinery set up at Kabale Busheruka sub-county in Hoima district. The refinery project includes a 2,111 kilometer long multi-products pipeline that will evacuate refined products from the refinery to a storage terminal at Namwabula Mpiji district. The amount of money that has been invested so far in exploration and appraisal is somewhere around $3.8 billion. Uh, and this $3.8 billion has been used to find 6.5 billion barrels of oil. And so you can see clearly that the cost of finding oil in Uganda is very low. It's less than a dollar per barrel. This is a very interesting number because uh, around the world actually, we find that finding costs of oil in other parts of the world, are around the world, are actually around $5. So you can see that the aspect of managing costs has been done well by Uganda so far. Presidents Yorim Seveni of Uganda and Samia Suluhu Hassan of Tanzania, Total Energies, China National Offshore Oil Corporation, Uganda National Oil Company, and Tanzania Petroleum Development Corporation in 2021 concluded the final agreements required to launch the major oil projects. With the ECOP project recently getting a go-ahead and the international oil companies, IOCs, announcing the final investment decision, FID, for Uganda's upstream and ECOP projects in February of 2022, Uganda is set to produce its first oil as early as 2025. The Lake Albert development project is expected to bring transformative opportunities and significant value to Uganda's socio-economic sphere. Our journey into uh, petroleum development has been long, but for a reason, and I'd like us not to lose that patience, and I'd like us to really contain our anxiety as we walk towards 2025.